Well, how do there, chums? We're continuing on with the Omega Expedition, and we're now entering into a phase three. I'm just loading into games. So let's jump on over and let's see how we're getting on. Okay, yeah, it's still loading in the rendition. There was an update today, so maybe that's why it's taking a bit longer. Okay, well, I'm on the phase one page, and it looks like the optional milestone has completed. I did scan a lot on that planet, so, you know, let's see how we get on with that one. I, I, I thought it actually popped, to be honest. I thought that was done. Okie dokie. Yeah, we should be able to. We should be able to. Ex we should be able to claim all of them. So that one, I should be able to claim right now. But it's not letting me. How freaking weird! All right, okay, fine. Let's just press on on then. Let's let's just forget about those. I mean, it looks like you click on it and it sort of like highlights it for you. I have done my own sort of bit of jaunt into that. Anyway. That's, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna worry. One man's treasure. Dig up buried items. Times free. Let's go do that then, people. Let's see if it actually finds me the planets I need to go to. Like I say, I've just done an update, so perhaps it's a bit twitchy for that reason. Don't know though. Cool, yeah. And is it any old planet we go to for this? Um, are you going to give me a marker? No, you're just going to wipe the mission from the screen and not tell me what I need to do next. Fine. Locate buried items. Okay, I guess we go to any old planet then. Let's go down here then. Let's have a quick look. See, don't really want to overly land in nighttime, but it looks like nighttime is fast approaching. Depends which way that sort of like darkness is going though, doesn't it? Anyway, let's get down on the planet and let's see if there are buried items to be had upon just any old planet. I mean, this was just completely random. It was the first one in front of me, people, so... There we go. Now, it would be nice to land somewhere that has an actual landing pad, but at this point, I don't overly care because um, I've upgraded my launch thrusters and all that sort of shenanigans. So we'll just land any old place. You can see there's a lot of bases here at the moment as well. Let's, uh, let's jump out the ship. And let's get scanning, shall we? Boom. Okay. And, yep, the sweep scanner just locks straight into place. There's a subterranean item. Let's go and get it. It's a hundred odd years away, people. Might just be able to run, skip and jump there. Pow! Ah, that was supposed to be more epic than that, people. All right, let's get our terrain manipulator on this beastie. And let's zap the ground. Pow! Okay, when you are replenishing this, sometimes you've got, like, silicate powder. I always use that to recharge it. Okay. We've got a buried cachet there. Does that count? Nope. We'll zap this thing, then. Let's use um, the mining laser on it. Melt you get bag. There we go. Oh, that counted as two. Well, that's pretty handy, isn't it? All right, let's find something else in close quarters by the looks of things, people. What that? That counts, does it? It's trying to lock me on something else, but we'll go there then. Well, I was just standing on that a second ago. Oh, hold on. There's there's two. There's one right here as well. Okay, fine. We'll go to this buried cache instead. I think it might be closer. I think this is the one it was trying to lock me on to anyway. Brilliant. It looks, like, it looks like this one is loaded, this planet, loaded with the things. Now, to be honest, people, I don't really dig up buried caches inside of my legacy save. You know, this is the first time I've really bothered. Train manipulator. Oh, look, we've got a double cache again. We've done. Might as well zap this thing, will not I? There you go. Boom. Lovely. Oh, is it that I would have got all three in there. Hold on, I just got an expansion socket, didn't I? That was pretty cool if I did. Inventory is full. Okay, fine. Have a look-see. All right, well, we can get this installed. Person yes, lovely. And we've also got... Uh, oh, I need to be a bit closer to my shippity ship. Where did I put my shippity ship? Ship, where are you? There it is, over yonder hill. And we go get this installed. I'm just going to jiggly pokery around, get a few free spaces, and I'll let you know when I come across a milestone that might be tricky. Okay, chums, we've got to take a three different environmental photograph. The Scorched Planet, Airless and Frozen. Okay, so if I go to my Discoveries page and we look at this system that we have right here. So the Frozen one, we can go there. That's fine. That's Star Bulb. Cactus Planet. Hmm, I don't think that's going to class as being super hot fungal mold well, we do need to get some fungal mold for a later badge and we've got that one imminent core detonation okay that one could be 
classed as scorched. That's like a lava world. And that one is scorched. OK, well, we'll go to the one that says scorched. So we'll do that one and that one, the ringed planet and also the frozen planet. So let's go do those two. And then we're looking to try and to find the airless world, I suppose. Float to the skies. And here we go. OK, now on planets that are already discovered, you only need to break the atmosphere and you can take the photo while you're still inside of your ship. You don't have to get out of your ship. You don't have to put boots on the ground because it's already been discovered. When we go to one that hasn't been discovered, I probably will have to jump out of my ship and then take the photo. So let's just see if my theory works. Let's just take a quick picture here. I'm not even getting out of my ship. Coming out like this and taking that as a picture. OK, that, that'd do. And how do I take the picture again? I've forgotten how to freaking take pictures, people. OK, take screenshot is that button. OK, fine. Chikapoom. I've been playing on my Xbox too much and PC. There we are. Pow. Take screenshot. There you go. Frozen planet done. Go. Cool. Take to the skies. And now we want the scorched planet, which I think was the one with the rings on it, wasn't it? Let's have a look for the ringed planet in this system. It's funny how every single system has at least one, well, always has one ringed planet. They're not going to have two, just the one. Oh, that's it. No, that, that's not it. That's, um, that was the lava world, wasn't it? There we go, that one over there. Let's head there. We're on our way, scorched planet! Okay, we're just entering into the atmosphere of this scorched planet. I'm just going to level the ship out. And I'll show you how I go about finding an airless world for people inside the viewerverse. I mean, it's a little bit hit and miss how to find the airless world. I can show you how to do it in a roundabout way. OK, right, so here we go. Let's, uh, let's get a picture of this one. Let's put the sun up in the sky there. Let's get a lovely picture of that, shall we? There we go. Might as well make the picture semi-decent. There we are. There we are. Right, now, for me to get the airless world, the way that I go about doing this might differ to how you guys go about doing it. It's not a guarantee, but I tend to look for red star systems. So if I just go there, I should already have my cadmium drive installed. If you haven't, just install one. Or if you if you have got the plans already for idium drive, get the idium drive installed. OK, cool. I'm going to jump over to this red star very quickly. Now, the red stars are usually uncharted and they have more chance of spawning in. A airless world or an exotic world now we are we do have to find an exotic creature in a later phase but I'm just after a um, abandoned world at the moment let's have a quick look see if we can find one okay so that's a sporal planet that's one that's got the exotic creatures on so it's a very good way to find your exotic creatures I'll do that milestone at another point though and there's another one yeah so that's a pillared moon and that one nope Okay, cool, yeah. Let's uh, have a look, see if we can spot another planet in this in this system. See if any others uh, I could be airless. If not, I'll see if I can find another way of finding an airless planet that's a little bit more on point. But this is usually how I find them. You might just have to go to a couple. Oh, dang. Go away, you, with your hostile scans. What's that over there? Foggy moon? No. Nope. Usually a giveaway is rusted metal. Mm, okay. What about you? Are you one? Damn it. The pirates are gunning here. Leave me alone. Right, just run away. The trouble with a lot of these abandoned systems is they haven't got stations either. So if you do get scanned like this, it can be a bit of a git to get away from the Sentinels. I sh should have called in my freighter, but it hasn't got the cadmium drive in. But yeah, to get away from, from Sentinels, I usually just spin like this so they can't shoot me. If you've got wingmen, they would distract them. You lose them in half the time. But you see on my little radar, I'm waiting for that orange block to drop off the bottom of it. It does take a little while. There we go. And then, boom, I can escape them. Now that I escape them, I can, I can look around the system a little bit more. But no, I don't think this system has got one of the planets in. Foggy, Noxious, we've got Cadmium. There's no airless worlds there, people. All of them have got life. Which is a bit of a shame. OK, all right. Let me give this a bit of a rethink. OK, chums. Now, to find an airless world, 
on the galactic map, you see that you've got 38 light years here, and then you've got M, 9, P, F. Well, any that start with M, B or O or K sometimes have them in. So you see there, that one's F. Don't go to an F. You want one that's like a B, M, O or K. Now, I normally go to ones that don't have water because airless worlds don't have water. So if you can find a system that doesn't have water, not dissonant either, because they can still have water. So you see there, that's an M. So B, O, M or K, bonk, okay? So let's go there. That one, I think, has got a high chance of having an airless world in it. So let's jump on over and let's see if I'm right. There we go, we're on our adventure, people. What I should have done is when I click the planet, is to see whether it had a lot of moons and a lot of planets. The more planets it has and the more moons it has, the higher the chance of you getting an airless amongst them is. I didn't actually look at how many were here, but it looks like I just got lucky anyway. There's a couple of moons here and there's a couple of planets. So let's just start scanning a couple and see if we've got lucky people. So we go. And that's cadmium, gold and cobalt. That would have one of the exotic creatures on for that latter badge, which is still blinking good. There we go. Terraforming Catastrophe, Cadmium and Rusted Metal, that's what we're after. Now this was a red star system, so you will need the Cadmium Drive to go there, but you're looking for B, O, M or K inside of those little digits on the actual map, and hopefully that's going to dial you into where you need to go to. Let's go here, let's go and pick this one up. Now, I could, you're quite right, go to the other planet behind me and get the exotic creature, but that's not to a later phase. So I'm going to do it in the phase order because people are looking for help on various badges. But this should get you the airless world. Now, no one has jumped out of a ship on this planet. So if my theory is right, I might have to actually put boots on the ground before I can take a photo. Let's see if we can just be cheeky and take a photo without getting out of the ship, shall we? Let's see if it works without getting out of the ship. There we are. Let's get rid of that. And let's do a photo. Let's see if that works. Yeah, it did. It worked. Okay, cool. Well, anyway, you could have probably paused it there and got yourself the coordinates for this. If you've got the, all the uh, glyphs, which you don't get awarded inside of this expedition, there's the actual portal code in the lower left. You might have to do a screenshot, then zoom in on the screenshot to get that nice and big. But there you go, people. Anyway, that's, that's that one done. Lovely. Cool. Packet of red seeds. And I've got the nutrient processor now. So this is this the phase where you have to actually make biscuits? There you go. You've got all the blueprints popping up right here for all the different plants. Nice. Cool, yeah. And uh, let's go and see what the next badge is. Hot Pursuit. Ah, so now we have to bring a contraband across the universe. Okay. All right. Well, I'll show you how to do that one. So, first you need to find yourself a pirate system, an outlaw system in space. It'd be no denoted by a tiny skull. So let's have a look around, see if we can find one that's got a skull on it. Now, my economy, I don't think I've got an economy scanner in. We might have to get an economy scanner installed at the very least. I think we do. So let's just jump to a GEC system of space for a moment. And I call in the old Nexus and we'll go and get ourselves one of those economy scanners, unless... I've got the blueprint. We'll check when we finish warping if we've got the blueprint. Okay, well, we've arrived. Let's have a quick look, see if we've got the blueprint to actually install. So this is my ship up here, and as you can see, I've got no tech slots free inside of my starship. So it means I've got to delete something if I do want to put in. Um, I could get rid of that. I get rid of that A-class. Yeah, we can put it in. So we need a microprocessor, we need wiring looms, both of which are sold inside of the station. So let's go and buy those, people. I'll show you where you buy them inside of the station. Now these guys, when they scan me, they keep finding my fusion igniters, which are worth quite a lot of money. I'm just wondering whether they might be registered as contraband, because they're definitely after them. Anyway, let's leg it over here. Let's just go and sell a few bits into the Galactic Trade Terminal and we'll, we'll sell the fusion igniters. It might even count as being contraband. Okay, let's head on over then. Dun, 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 dun. And I'm just going to go sell some bits first of all. So I'm going to sell the Gecknip. And I'm also going to I'm gonna sell the rusted metal. You know what, I'm just going to get rid of the marine shelter. And keep the um, Nautilum Bay though, we need that for a future mission. Salvage data, we've got a lot of that. We've got the ticket to freedom as well. I'll sell those 
further and that. Okay, well, where is the fusion igniters? Let's uh, swap the ship inventory. And let's have a look, see if they're inside of here. Bum, bum, bum. Fusion accelerant, we'll sell that. And we didn't need the star silk because the chair didn't need it. It looks like they patched that out, people. We did it originally, so there is that. We'll sell the runaway mold. Uh, I'm going to save that multi tool slot when we get given the star. Okay. Well, let's um, let's go back in there. I forgot to buy the bits I need. Oh, I don't want to talk to you. Go away, you. Try that again. Okay, here we go. And buy. And I want to buy... How many do I need? I've forgotten how many I need now because that gek. Right, here we are. Wrong menu. Uh, Starship. We need five microprocessors and one wiring loom. Okay. Five microprocessors, one, two, three, and four, and five. And one wiring loom. Thank you very much. Don't mind if I do. Let's get that installed then. Chicka pow, chicka done. Okay, there we are. Now we should be able to fly out and find ourselves an outlaw system inside of space. Now, I haven't got a lot of room for smuggling stuff, and I can't even install these right now, which is really annoying. Okay, so I might have to get rid of a few things. I've got a couple of slots, but is that enough for the contraband? We'll find out. But you know what What I could do? Now that I've got that portable refiner on my person, I can refine a few things. So let's grab those shards. Those shards. Oh, there they are. We'll grab those. We'll stick those in there. And we'll spin those into nanites. Yes, go for it. Well, that frees up an extra slot. Let's go! Awesome. You have to do all sorts of jiggery pokery, don't you, inside of this game in early stages, just to have a little bit of extra inventory space. Galactic map. Well, now we're looking for one with a little skull on it, people. So it'd be on the second one down where it shows economy. And they have a little skull. So let's just keep going around until we spot a skull. So I tell you what, I'll wait until I find one and I'll let you know. Okay. That took some time, I'm not going to lie, but there you go, you can see there, next to the prospecting type hammer is a tiny little skull. It's very easy to miss, I might have gone past a couple, but there you go, and it's not too far from where I was. There you go, and we're warping off to this pirate system of space, people. So, once I get there, I've then got to buy the contraband, hopefully we're going to have enough room for it, and then we're going to jump to a normal area of space to sell it. Okay, you would notice that um, pirate systems and the pirate stations... They're like all blown to bits. And then they've got this flashing red sort of glow to them. And as you fly in, they've got cannons at the mouth. Well, they usually have. Look, there's some cannons right there that just flew past. Lovely jubbly. They've got a bit of a different layout to normal stations. If this is the first one you've ever come to, have a little jaunt, have a little look around. Familiarise yourselves with them. The only thing that differs inside of these from one to the other is the colour of this hauler. Sometimes they're red, sometimes they're yellow, sometimes they're blue, etc, etc. But they're mission agents inside of there. You want to go to the left of there and go down to this little guy here. And the only things that you want to buy are all the things that are in purple. I'm going to buy as much of that as I possibly can. And that's all classed as illegal and contraband. Now, you may have noticed there's a portal over there. You can only jump to other pirate systems from pirate systems and only jump to normal systems of space from normal stations. You can't jump to the one or the other and make it too easy. So the whole smuggling thing is now we've got to jump to another system and as soon as we arrive in the other system is fly straight in the station. Do not dilly-dally. Do not mess about. We're just going to go straight to this one here. We're just going to jump there, fly straight into the station and get the heck out of Dodge because... You're going to get scanned by Sentinel Interceptors fairly quickly when you're heavily loaded with smuggled goods. Let's just hope it's enough smuggled goods to pop the actual badge for this milestone. Here we are. Let's spin it round. Oh my days. There seems to be a, 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 a battle going on anyway. Which has now screwed me up for spotting the blinking station. Oh, for fudge sake. Oh, you gits. You gits. Where's the station? I can't see the station on the actual map. Right, I'm going to have to get away from these guys. It's usually right near you. There you go. You see it on the top radial bar instead. That was lucky. I just spotted it on the top radial bar in the centre of the screen. 
it wasn't showing on the radar, as you can see, nothing on the radar, until I actually flew in through the actual door. I really don't like Sentinel sort of... Uh, the, the frigate interactions sometimes. When you don't want them to happen, they happen all the time. When you do want them to happen, you can't find them. It, it's, it's the way, it's the, it's the Atlas gods of frickin's you, frickin no man's sky that does that. It really is. Okay, let's anyway, let's go sell all this stuff. Yeah, it's like waiting for a bus and then two turn up when you've been waiting for like long, longer than it's supposed to turn up. What is it, Sod's Law or something? There's probably other names for it around the world, but yeah. Okay, here we go. Let's go sell. Uh, okay, uh, where's all my contrabandy stuff that I just bought? You will see it marked in purple, which makes it a bit easier to spot. There we go, there's one. There's the other. And there's number three. We sold all three. Let's hope that that's enough. It is. Brilliant. If it isn't, you've got to find yourself another pirate system. Go buy a load of stuff and do it again. There you are. Done. Cool. Loads of blueprints. Nice. Let's do the next one. What's the next one here? Manufacture liquid explosive. Okay. Now there's a couple of ways that you can do this. You can grow the actual plants to actually make the liquid explosive back at your base. Or you can find it. So firstly, we need to get um, acid. Okay. So it says that you've got to learn the actual recipes from the anomaly I don't know whether you do or don't let me just check here quickly no I haven't got the recipes to craft it so our first stop is the anomaly let's go to the anomaly people okay jumps so you go past this guy with the big toothy pegs that's um, a keyboard warrior yeah hello there Perseus you head on over here and you head on over to this console right here people and then I don't want to talk to you no do one okay this one here I think they've I think they've changed the hitboxes on everything. I keep talking to people a mile away. Okay, right. Now if you press R1 to go to the next page, there's your acid instruction. Nice. We need that. And we need to be getting this one over here. The liquid explosive. So beforehand you have to learn the lubricant. Yeah, we don't really need the lubricant though. We need the unstable gel though. We definitely need unstable gel. And that's going to make your liquid explosive. You need the acid. You need the unstable gel to make this. Okay, right. So to make the acid, we're going to need fungal mold. So we need to find a fungal weld. Okay, people. So firstly, let's go and find that fungal weld. Now we might be in a system, luck be had it, that has a fungal weld. Let's have a look. And there is. There is a fungal weld right here. Is there one that has cactus flesh? No, another fungal weld. Star bowl. Copper. And frost crystal so we can't get the cactus flesh which is a good thing because i can show you how to use your catalog to aid you to find what you're after so if you're not lucky if you're not in a fungal world system you would use the same sort of methods that i'm going to show you in a minute to find a cactus world but to find a fungal world yeah i'll show you and it'll make more sense in a bit anyway we're going to go and fly and get ourselves the fungal type stuff now you have to have the hazmat gauntlets installed inside of your exosuit these things we got given this a little while ago so you should have it now if i was thinking i would have given myself a load of fungal mold inside of the save you know where you pass stuff into yourself i didn't give myself any fungal mold and i didn't give myself any cactus flesh for this actual mission. Okay, right, anyway, let's uh, fly around. Let's go and find our fungal planet. There it is right there. And let's go and get some fungal mold on our way to the fungal planet. Now, all the tips for this mission tell you to grow it at your base. If you do grow it at your base, you've got to wait for grow time. And that can be a number of hours before you're going to be able to get your resources. Here we go. Let's head on down to the actual planet. Now, this fungal world, I am looking for like these giant mushrooms. At night, sometimes you can see them a little bit better. They, they glow green at night. So they're usually quite easy to see. And I'm surprised we're not seeing any just by flying around in a circle like this. They're usually quite commonplace. There they are, right there. There we go. That's what they look like. So I'm just going to set it down next to these. If you can, land on the night side of the planet. You're going to find your harvestable plants a lot easier. I wouldn't advise landing this close to them. Because sometimes you go and try to harvest one you're going to get back in your ship also as you land sometimes it can 
incinerate one. No, it hasn't incinerated this one. But now getting this is quite tricky because you might have got back into your ship. Here we go. Let's go grab a load more fungal mold over here. Some more there. And there. Now, normally, there's a whole field of these things. When you find one, there's usually a whole cluster. But if I haven't got enough, I could always use a duplication method and duplicate them out. But let's see if we've got enough now to craft our acid, shall we? So where's the acid? There it is right there. We haven't got enough fungal mould right now. Now, I could find another patch of this stuff. And you can do that just by using this and looking around. There's a fungal mould cluster right there. I didn't see him. He's on top of this rock. He's a tiny one. So we are. Let's go pick him. There's uh, some more up here, actually. Let's grab that one, too. And we should be fairly close now to having enough. Now, what we don't have is a, a lot of Mordite. You can also grow Mordite. But Mordite, the easiest way to get it... Now, there's a lot of people that might not agree with doing this. But you can just kill creatures. The only thing is, I think this might not have many creatures. Oh, there's a creature right there. Let's go kill him. I could duplicate the Mordite, but just to prove a point, you can get Mordite from killing the creatures. You also can get some meaty chunks that we don't overly need. There we go, we've got some uh, Mordite right there. Kill this guy as well. In the face, little creature. Boom. You don't get a, a, a decent chunk of Mordite anymore. They still give you loads of Mordite for killing creatures. Not so much anymore. So I've got a little bit more medication to do. Maybe just one, more, one or two more creatures would do the trick. Let's see if we can spot some more red dots. Sadly, it's night time, so they're a little bit rarer at night. Creature, creature, where are you? There you are. Die. Yes, I need your Mordite. I know, right? The bigger the creature, sometimes the more the Mordite you get. There's one more there. Let's just kill another one just to make sure I've got enough. And another one. Might as well. Okay, we're on a murdering spree. Let's get a couple. Wait, hold still. Be murdered. There we go. We've got all of our Mordite, I think, now. We should be able to make our acid. There's our acid. Done. Right, so next off, we need to make the unstable gel. Now, to make the unstable gel, we need cactus flesh. There's no cactus planets in this system. So if I go into my catalogue, then if I go into up here, the materials and items, then I want to go to... Is it raw materials or is it plants? I think it's plants. Plants, yes. And you can hit up cactus flesh right here. And you hit X on on here. It says locate substance. You might have a different button depending on what platform you're on. But if you hit that, we should be able to then use the galactic map to then go and find where we need to get to. It looks like I've upset some creatures by murdering their family, which um, is understandable. Run like the wind, Captain of the Steers. Is that some other unpicked... No, it's not. Anyway... We'll be heading off into the galaxy map. Here we go. Hiya! So all you would have done, if you can't find fungal mould, rather than select cactus flesh, you would select the fungal mould, and it will find you a fungal planet. Okay, people? Okay, so anyway, let's jump to the galactic map. And you would notice on the galactic map, that I've now got a little icon that looks like an air of wheat or corn or whatever. But when you go to it, look, cactus flesh automatically helps you find what you're after. And there we go. There's my cactus flash flesh. <laughs> Baron Moon planet. Let's head on down then. Go we up. And let's see if we can spot the cactuses from the air. Now, I don't think the cactuses actually glow at night. They might, but I, I don't think they do. But they're usually quite easy to spot, depending on how many cactuses and variants of cactus these planets have. Now, there's, there's cactuses all over this planet, isn't there? Yeah, sometimes you can get lucky and you might get one of these cactusy worlds that are covered in honey. And then it's really easy to spot your cactuses. Not so much when you're in your ship like this, flying over a planet full of cactuses, trying to spot a certain type of cactus. No. You can get lucky. I don't think I'm going to get lucky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to land and use my sweep scanner. Great. Incoming score storm, just as I choose to land, people. Which is Adam and Eve it. Okay, that's going to make seeing them a little bit difficult. Okay, right, let's just jump on out. Let's see if we can get some locked in. 
Okay, so there's there's loads, apparently. 170 U's that way. I think I can see them. All right. Well, because there's a storm and it's an extreme one at that, I'm going to fly there. I locked onto it using my scanner. So hopefully it's going to be lit up like a Christmas tree. Yeah, it's only a stone's throw away. There it is. And you can even see it in the storm now. I've locked onto it. I'm just going to glide over there. And here they all are. Yeah. They're a brighter green. They're very green. They're almost a bilious green or a goblin green. Into Games Workshop stuff. Yeah, that's uh, jumping out. Let's go grab a load really quickly. There we are. Cool. Get into my pocket, cactus. You can see how quickly I'm losing my freaking hazard protection on this extreme storm planet. If I would have walked here, I would have used a shed load of freaking sodium or batteries or something. But you see how many cactuses are here? This is usually how many sort of mushrooms you would find in a fungal cluster. I got very unlucky with that fungal cluster. Some of them were up on a floating rock, weren't they? So we go, let's grab all of these anyway. We might have enough. Oh, I just got bit by a hazardous flora. Let's quickly get back into our ship and let's see if that's enough. Hopefully it is. Uh, let's just craft it here, shall we? The unstable gel created. Now we just need to make the liquid explosive. Let's make that over here. And we're done. That's that badge. That, for me, was probably the hardest badge to get in this whole expedition. You know, finding the airless world can be a bit tricky as well if you don't know what you're looking for. But there we go. We've got that one because it is just a random numbers game otherwise. And there's more systems starting with F than pretty much any other. So there is that as well. Okay, right. Uh, right. Unbound the second memory. I've got to make the memory fragment. Okay, well, how do we go about making that memory fragment? Has it actually selected that mission? Yes, it is. Okay. I'm going to here. We've got to make that. So I need magnetized ferrite and sodium nitrate. All right, okay. So if I now take out those nanites, cool. Have I got some ferrite dust inside of here that I can... Have I got one ferrite dust? Okay, brilliant. Well, I've got some magnetized ferrite. It's not like I haven't got any. I can put the pure ferrite in there. We can get that turning into magnetized ferrite. And the other thing we needed was the sodium. And I've only got 12... Ah, that's... Oh, I've got 351 sodium. So if I put that in, we should be able to turn it into sodium nitrate. And we can do it all inside my ship, just sitting here. But I'm fairly sure you know how to get yourself some ferrite and turn it into magnetised ferrite. So it's not much of a hardship, this one. Okay, so I've made the magnetised ferrite. I'm putting sodium in here to turn it into sodium nitrite. There we go. And that's on the bake too, people. Okay, let's just hope that's enough to please the gods of this. There we go. Let's head on over here then. And boom. Done. Where'd it go? Where the... Where the fly... That, that was weird. That was strange, wasn't it? Jumped me off of it. Alright, so we jump up into space. And as you know, we've got a pulse to make this thing work. So we fly out here. Go over here. Pop that. Reveal memory. And then we pulse. Meow. I hope we can get some sort of strange spatial anomaly that's going to appear and chatters. There we are. Hello. Incoming message. There we are. Subroutine. Atlas Diagnostics. Yep. A march that has swept before it across the galaxy, unstoppable, inescapable. Now nothing but a memory. Absorb memory. The colossal megalith floats before me. All the more surreal for being ripped from whatever planetary context once housed it. I feel myself confronted, blah de blah de blah. Yeah, all lovely stuff. I did this in the full playthrough. I have got a theory on who Leto is. I kind of think Leto is like a a name drop to the Greek mythos. She was the god of goddess of motherhood. She plays quite a prominent role. She was one of the actual um, titans that was female, and there isn't that many of them, to be fair. So, I kind of think that maybe because she's the goddess of motherhood, perhaps it's a an old name for the Void Mother before she became the Void Mother. Yeah, I got a feeling that Leto is an old reference to the Void Mother. But we'll, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, that's, that's my theory, my working theory. I did a little shorts video on it the other day. 
Right, okay, cool, yeah. Uh, now what's next then? Okay, let's have a look-see. We've got to get to Rendezvous free. And I'm probably miles away from that now. Luckily, I upgraded my warp drive, so hopefully I can get back there quite quickly. Nope, it's out of jump range. All right, well, what I might do then is just fly into the station, jump back to my base, and then do it from there. I'll do it from my base, people. Cool. I'll see you back at my base. Right, so I'm back at my base, taking off from here. Let's see if that gets us closer to Rendezvous 3. All the Rendezvous points in this one are very close together, which is something that I liked. You didn't have to overly use warp fuel. You didn't have to craft loads. So if you do get sort of off the beaten track looking for things, just jump back to your base and Rendezvous 1. And Rendezvous 2 and 3, 4 and 5 are a stone's throw away from it. Something to also note, people, is when you get to Rendezvous 3, the actual ringed planet in that system is also a rusted metal planet. It's a desolate planet. It has no air. So if you want to take a photo of an airless world in Rendezvous 3, discovered by Hello Games, this planet here, Gilnetti XV, in Rendezvous 3, is actually airless. Right, well I didn't see any comms balls popping up as I was flying down to here. I'm gonna cra I'm gonna land by this crash freighter and hope that that triggers it. And we'll see if it does or doesn't. Looks like someone's put a base here. If this is the rendezvous point and there is bases here, I'm not going to save and exit my game here. Just in case we get that crashing issue. And that is rendezvous free. That's the last point that we need to be at. Now, Hello Games did say they would stop people from building bases at points of interest, but that's obviously not the case. Okay, we can apply the ship augmentation. Or if we hit leave, we get given the actual slots. Yeah, I could leave and get given the slots. There we are. So, cool, yo. We've got the Starship inventory instead. Nice one. Okay, cool. Then I can claim this. Pow. And we've got given the Atlas Scepter. Cool. Atlas Scepter, yes, we will have that. I'm going to take the free multi-tool. I'm not going to package anything out just yet. We'll sort that out later. But now we've got that. That's pretty darn sweet, isn't it? Let's fly back and up to the station. Now, the reason that I haven't got my Atlas sort of um, faceplate on or mask on is because I exited out to play the weekend mission, so I went back to normal save. And for whatever reason, until I claim this exp until I've completed the expedition, I can't claim that mask across other saves. So yeah, I'm gonna have to fly inside of the space station, and I'm gonna create my save here. There's got a less chance of it crashing inside the space station, but not only that, I'm gonna put the um, the faceplate back on. So I'll see you inside the station. Right, oh, let's head on over to here then, and let's um, go into the appearance modifier. Boom! And I'm gonna get to head. And I'm just going to apply that head for now. Lovely. I'm going to change the markings to like number four. That looks a bit too jazzy, doesn't it? Let's, let's go back a level. I think that looks a little bit better. Sometimes less is more. There we are. And yes. Cool. Look at that. Look at that ensemble. Isn't that looking lush? All right. Well, let's, let's uh, go into your camera mode. Because I probably need that for my... Um, my thumbnail or something. Or I might just get the image from whatever Kurt sent me. Assistant No Man's Sky. Thank you, Kurt. Salute Mondo. Much appreciated. Yeah, there we go, people. That's pretty much this whole sort of phase done. We'll be doing phase four next time, people. We've got a couple there because I dug up the ancient bones already. Cool. Well, I say a couple. We've got one. One. That's not a couple. Anyway, going to jump in my ship out of my ship create a save and then i'll be ending off people so let's go make sure i've saved that little modification to my old helmet lovely Chapow! and done people inside the viewers coolio oh, let's jump on over to me so yeah i'm having fun with this expedition playing it through a second time i mean it, it's no different to the experimental branch even though that Hello Games said that the experimental branch was a version. Make that what you will. I will be doing a review of the Omega update and release on PlayStation 5 and my thoughts and feelings. And I'm sure that's going to register in there somewhere, people inside the view of us. But until next time, until part four, I'll see you then. Well, I don't know what I'm doing in between then. <laughs> anyway, have fun, whatever you're doing. Take care. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again.